In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix your hip flexor pain in a very easy to follow step-by-step -step guide. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Dr. Rowe coming to you from Spine Care in St. Joseph, Michigan. In this video, we're going to go over a big overlooked cause of lower back pain, which are tight hip flexors, notably the iliopsoas muscles. If you're unfamiliar with the hip flexors, they're a group of muscles that lie on the top of your thigh towards your groin, and they function to flex the hip. That is the movement of bringing your knee towards your chest. When these muscles become strained and inflamed, they can cause a lot of pain and discomfort over the top of your thigh, towards your groin, even pain that will travel deep into your pelvis, towards your buttocks, and lower back. Since these muscles are very deep, you really can't massage them out. Instead, to get pain relief, we need to focus on mobility exercises that are going to engage and lengthen these muscles, and then more importantly, focus on strengthening them. And I'm going to show you how to do this in a very easy step-by-step -step guide. To get the best results, go through all of the exercises and also in order. As a bonus, all of the exercises can be done at home, require no equipment, and you may find give quick hip flexor pain relief even within 30 seconds. So let's get started and fix that hip flexor pain right now for good. So let's start by warming up the hip flexors. This is a really important step because it's going to loosen up the muscles and just make it a lot easier to do the other exercises in this video. One of the easiest ways to do this is with the progressive lunge very easy to do. So start standing with very good upright posture. We want to keep our back as straight as possible during this exercise. So we don't want to round into it like this. To help out, take your hands, put them together kind of like a prayer position, put your hands against your chest. You want to tighten your core, that is taking your belly button towards your spine, and then squeeze your glutes. It'll just help support the spine a little bit more. The movement from here is very easy. You're just going to step forward with one leg and then lunge your body weight forward. The more that you lunge forward, the more that you're going to feel a deep activation into the psoas and the hip flexors on the other leg, the back leg, I should say. The key with this though is that we're going to progress into it. So don't go directly right into the full lunge. Just go down enough where you feel those muscles start to fire. And then you're going to hold this comfortably for about one to two seconds. You're just going to relax and then you're going to repeat it on the other side. On the next repetition, you're going to notice that you have a little bit more range of motion because those muscle fibers are starting to lengthen. So go down just a little bit more and then keep repeating this over and over again until you feel like you can't go any further or you can take your knee all the way down towards the floor. And with this one too, you can always throw in as many repetitions and sets as you like. To make it more challenging, you can start to use dumbbells and make it a very good strengthening exercise. I like to take this one to the next level by targeting the hips and the uh, uh, muscles around the hips just a little bit differently. So I'm going to do what is called a side lunge. Pretty similar. Let's get back into our original stance just like this, but this time around I'm going to step towards my side, keeping this other leg straight. And then you're going to lunge into it just like this until you feel a very good activation of the muscles on the inner part of the leg and also around the hips. One to two second hold. You're just gonna come back up like this and then just repeat it on the other side. Again, with each repetition, try to progress into it just a little bit more. But I try to do this one for about 10 to 15 repetitions on both sides. So after we have the muscles warmed up, we're going to move on to the most important part, strengthening exercises. If you want quick but also long-lasting pain relief, you have to make those muscles stronger. Here's a really easy one that you can do in bed or on a floor. What I'm going to do is go into a basic dead bug position. So my legs are going to go up, knees towards the ceiling, and also bent at 90 degrees. The first movement is very easy. Let's tighten our core muscles, again, taking our belly button towards our spine, and I'd like to squeeze my glutes right here. Just lower one leg down, just like this. Straighten your knee, but the key with this exercise is don't let your leg or your foot touch the bed or the floor. Let it hover about an inch or two above. In this position, you're going to feel a lot fire, the leg muscles and the core. I like to hold this one for about five seconds. This is how we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to bring our knee back into uh, 90 degrees like this, Take your hands, overlap them, put them right on the top of the knee. Now drive your knee towards your shoulder, but resist against it with your hands. 
When you do this, you're going to feel a ton fire on the top of the legs, including the psoas and the hip flexors. What you want to do is press into it as much as you can comfortably, hold this for five seconds. And then what you're going to do is just repeat that exercise, just nice and slowly. I like to do this one for about five to 10 repetitions. But if you want to make it more challenging, throw in more repetitions and sets. But remember, whatever you do on one side, always switch to the other side to keep everything in balance. If you really want to take this one to the next level, you can do what is known as a marching bridge, which is also going to target the hip flexors, but a lot more muscles, including the glutes and the legs. So what I'm going to do in this position is have my knees bent, feet flat. Let's tighten our core, squeeze our glutes, take your hands, you can put them off to your side or on your hips. The movement is very easy. You're just pressing up with your pelvis and hips upward towards the ceiling until your body is in a nice straight line from your knees to your hips to your shoulders. If you're unable to get into this position, maybe you can only go up an inch or two because of weakness or tightness, do the best you can. Over time, you should notice that you have a lot more strength and flexibility to finally get into this position. But what I like to do is hold this one for about five seconds. If you want to make it more challenging, march one leg up like this. So we're really trying to take this knee towards our chest as much as we can, and you'll really start to feel those muscles on the top part of the leg start to fire. Five second hold, you're going to relax, and then you're going to repeat it on the other side, just nice and slowly for about five to 10 repetitions. And if it feels like you have a little bit more energy, you can always throw in another set or two. So here's a really easy hip flexor strengthening exercise. The great part about this one though, is you can do it pretty much anytime, anywhere. Start seated with very good upright posture. That means just trying to keep your back as straight as possible during this exercise. We're going to have our knees bent at 90 degrees, feet flat on the floor. Take your hands, grab off to the side of the chair right here, or if you have armrests on those for support. The first movement is very easy. We're just going to take one knee lifted upward towards our chest, kind of like a marching motion. The more that you lift that leg upward, the more that you're going to feel those hip flexors engage. You only want to go towards a comfortable point. If you start to feel any pain or discomfort, back off just a little bit before that point. Then you're going to hold this one comfortably for five seconds. You're going to relax, and then you're going to repeat this one five to 10 times. With each repetition, challenge yourself to build into it just a little bit more. And afterwards, if it feels like you have a little bit more energy, you can always throw in another set or two. Just make sure whatever you do on one side to switch to the other side and repeat to keep everything in balance. From there, we're going to take this one to the next level by making it an isometric exercise. That means that we're just going to put a little bit of resistance in there. So let's get back into that original stretch like this, lift it up until you hit a point where the muscles are firing. But this time around, overlap your hands just like this and put them on the top of your knee. You're going to gently, gently press down on your knee until you feel a very deep activation of those hip flexors. You want to hold this one comfortably again for five seconds. You're going to relax and then you're going to repeat this one five to 10 times. But again, you can always throw in another set or two and then just repeat on the other side. The last movement, and this one is really going to get those hip flexors firing, is to add knee extension in there. So it makes it a dynamic movement. So with this one, we're going to lift our leg up just like this, but this time around, extend the knee. That is straightening it as much as you can. You're really going to feel those muscles start to fire. Try to hold this one for five seconds. You're going to relax and then repeat this one five to 10 times on both sides. In the final step, we're going to focus on stretching. Stretches are perfect to do after strengthening exercises to keep the muscles loose and also help avoid soreness. One of my absolute favorite stretches is the psoas cobra because it's really going to target those hip flexors and a whole bunch of other muscles. To get into position, we're going to lie on our stomach right next to a wall or a door. You're going to have your knees bent roughly at 90 degrees and you're going to put the top of your feet right up against that door. We kind of want our knees as close as possible also. So as a note with this exercise before we begin, when you do it, you want to keep your hips and pelvis flat on the floor. We don't want them raised up like this. Instead, all the movement is going to come through our back. So let's start off with what is known as the baby cobra. So you're going to take your hands and put them right off to your side. So your arms are right off to your side. And then you're just going to gently push up like this. 
The key is what we want to feel is a very good stretch forming in the core muscles working down towards our pelvis into the front of the legs, the hip flexor. So really focus on feeling that. You're going to hold this one comfortably for 30 seconds, but if it feels good, you can hold it for longer several minutes if you're able to and also do nice slow controlled breathing from there you can relax by lowering your chest but i try to do this one for about three to five repetitions and with each repetition challenge yourself to build into it just a little bit more try to raise the back up just a little bit to intensify that stretch if you want to make this one an active stretch and take it to the next level when you're doing the cobra what you want to do is take the top of your feet and really press them into the door at the same time the more that you press into the door the more that you're going to really feel those hip flexors start to engage i only like to hold this one for about five seconds though relax and then repeat this one 10 to 15 times and build into it just a little bit more with each repetition. And if it feels like you have a lot more energy, you can always throw in another set or two. So really try to focus on building into the full Cobra, which is going all the way up just like this. But if you're unable to, do the best you can. If you want to take this one to even the next level, instead of having your body straight, tilt your back towards one side, moving through your waist. What this will do is open up the back on the other side. So if you tilt a little bit towards your right, you're really going to feel it open up on the left. So give that a try. Going all the way towards the right, going all the way towards the left. If you find that one position just offers you more relief, at that point, throw more repetitions in. If the exercise has helped, please support the channel by giving this video a like and maybe subscribing too. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.